The young Danish star, Michael Mays. Mays is ready to take on the world with his exciting brand of table tennis. The service shows a great deal of skill and he anticipates fearlessly. He has a tremendous feeling for a table tennis ball, a player with natural ability. Mays displays superb balance at all times, even when required to move quickly wide to either backhand or forehand. A short push with a fast action, the timing point being crucial. He is intuitive and that can surprise an opponent. A lob to break the heart of his adversary. It is difficult to anticipate what he will do next. Therefore, it's hard to design tactics to beat him. That is why the Chinese find Mei such a prodigious opponent. Inhibited all round play of Maze is an ideal for the modern day player. Two professional coaches, Mario Amazic and Peter Sartz. They appreciated the undoubted talent of Maze and have helped improve his skills. Also, Koji Matushta knew Maze when he was very young, and we will be asking his opinion of the Danish star. Let's highlight the attributes of Mays and examine the various aspects of his play. The fantastic world of Michael Mays. The curtain rises. What is the main feature of Michael Mays when playing table tennis? Mario Amazic, the number one coach in Europe, has helped many players over the years achieve great heights. He was the coach at Borussia Dusseldorf when Mays joined at the age of 16. He analyzes the major aspects of the Danes' play. I can vielleicht viele Dinge nicht erleben, aber uh, Potenzial erkennen kann ich schon. Also ja, ja. er hat dann spezifisch bei ihm erstmal Ausstrahlung, also ist ziemlich uh, Viel Selbstvertrauen hat er von sich selbst, von Natur. Und äh, seine Art, was er nahe zu spielen, äh, sehr guter Ausschlag, sehr guter Rückschlag. Äh, ist auch außergewöhnlich, weil viele probieren, normale Spieler unterstriche jetzt. Normale Spieler versuchen ein, zwei, drei Bälle arbeiten, schwitzen und äh, er, er spielt schon anderes. Ja, Erstmal. Äh, Ich glaube nicht, dass er auf sein Limit gekommen ist. Also da, äh, äh, er hat noch immer nicht große, aber Reserve schon. Und äh, dass er hat so gute Ergebnisse freue mich, aber das ist auch, äh, ich glaube, Motivation für ihn noch weiterzukommen, weil er kann das. Sein Körper, sein Vorhand, seine mh, kleine Sache über Netz, das ist sicher noch zu verbessern. Peter Sartz analyzes his play. He is the head coach of the Danish national team and spends more than six months a year with Mays. He is the person with the best knowledge of Michael Mays. Uh, he always have a really good hand uh, for the technique and uh, he always want, want to win every, every ball, every, every game. He never accept to to lose maybe now you know, he could accept but still he he angry yeah. and uh, beginning of his career he okay when he leading he really well he he play good positive and uh, but he will win every ball but when he he down he more and more angry and uh, the pl playing system falling down and uh, he give up, stop to move and uh, only play with hand. Beginning of the career, he movement was not mm, not so good when he 
special when he was down. He he tried to make quick point beginning. He don't was ready for work. He want to have point directly on service or directly on return. Quick point, first two, two three balls. This this is still his strong uh, side. First three balls, he is I think one of the best. But he need to could play longer and longer rally combination back and forehand for be top 10 player. Another person who knows Mays from his younger days. Koji Matsushita, for many years Japan's leading player. He played for Borussia Dusseldorf in the German Bundesliga. Matsushita played for Borussia Dusseldorf before Michael Mays. やっぱり、やっぱりバックハンドがすごく、あの、遅いボールもそういうふうにミックスさせて打つことができますし、あとミートでその叩くこともできますから、ですからすごくバリエーションがバックハンドが増えたなっていうような完成度が本当に高いバックハンドじゃないかなっていうふうにあの見えますけどね
he transfers his weight from the left foot to the right foot to increase the speed of the service, whilst maintaining good balance when the stroke is complete. Mays explains the important factors of the service. I think generally when you make service, it's important that you use your, your body and your underarm and your wrist. I mean, the wrist is very important, underarm and the wrist is very important to make the spin in the ball. Uh, so I think if you want to improve your serve, then you have to start just for fun. Try, try to do something, try to, try to make some crazy shots or try to hit the serve with a lot of spin and try to improve your, your wrist and see what, what can happen afterwards. And, I mean, when I practiced serve when I was a little bit younger, I just took many balls and then try. Uh, and then in the end you find out what is good, what is not good. And especially with service, then you also ch change your grip that I hold like this when I make service. It's that you get more out of your wrist. After the service, a positive third ball attack is crucial. Mays highlights an important aspect of the third ball attack. No, of course, you, you think where to place the serve and then afterwards you know round about where the ball is coming. If I'm making with up service, uh, up spin, then I'm expecting flip and then I know in my mind that normally I will uh, play against the flip. Huh? So that's why you think if I play down spin, then you know he will normally push and then you prepare for, for, for a push. And so you have in mind before you make the service what will come after. Mays tries to anticipate how the opponent will return his service so that he can move for the third ball attack faster and can hit the ball at the highest point. In order to win more points with the third ball attack, the combination of the service with the next stroke is important. Let's see how Mays achieves this goal. It's uh, very di uh, different, um, it's depending who you're playing. If I play one who receives very good with forehand, I try to maybe play some more service to backhand. If I play one who is good backhand, I try to uh, move the serve a little bit to forehand. It's, it's a little bit different. If you play one who flip very good, then you maybe play with downspin so he cannot flip. It's, it's depending on who you are playing. Watch carefully the direction of the service and Mays' movements in this rally. Mays serves with side spin deep to the forehand wing of his right-handed opponent. In this situation, Mays can anticipate that on most occasions the ball will be returned across the diagonal into his backhand. Mays anticipates correctly and moves around his backhand side in order to play a forehand topspin stroke. Although the opponent made a mistake, it is wonderful anticipation by Mays. The fact that Mays made a positive movement no doubt contributed to forcing the error. Now let's consider receiving service and the techniques required over the table. Firstly, Listen to the way Mays thinks when receiving service. I think receive is uh, very important in the game of table tennis. Uh, it's very important that you wait, you are not too fast, but you, are still, you still have fast hand because then you have time to see what kind of spin there is in the ball and, and you can still make the, make the spin in the receive. And, and generally I think you have to be wait but still fast hand. A good receive of service is absolutely crucial in modern day table tennis. Let's start with a drop shot receive. Stepping forward with his left foot, he brings his body close to the ball. He keeps the elbow free for any movement and receives with plenty of feeling for the ball. 
In the actual match, the ability of a drop shot against a variety of side spins is crucial. Mays returns the service with wonderful touch and great feeling. The drop shot prevents his opponent mounting an attack. Next, returning service with a flick. The wrist is flexible as he makes short contact with the ball. The flick is an aggressive way to return service. It puts the opponent under pressure. Let's look at this technique in an actual match. The head of the racket faces his opponent's backhand, suggesting that is the direction he will make the return. However, just before the impact, he changes the angle of the racket and flicks the ball to his opponent's forehand. You must always look for the service you can attack. Mays always looks for that opportunity and seizes the chance to attack whenever possible. Now, let's look at his push return with backspin. He times the ball early. Also, it's difficult for the opponent to determine how Mays will return the service. Will it be a short push or a drop shot? Yeah, I think uh, one of my best points is uh, to, to push long or to play short. Uh, what I try to think uh, of when I play short is that, that I see the spin in the ball. If it's a see up spin, I try to go over the ball a little bit and stop it. If I see down spin, I try to go under, but still fast. This I told a little bit before, that, that with fast hand, you can still make cut in the ball. And, and this is always what I try to think about when I receive. Mario Amazic advised Mays that his timing when returning with backspin was a little too early. He advised him to wait a little. However, Mays did not accept this advice. He preferred the earlier timing, which requires a very high level of skill. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's true. Uh, he wanted to wait and I, I wanted to do very fast. And now I think I find a little bit in the middle. Uh, I think what is mostly important in table tennis is that probably you have two choices. Huh? You can do fast and do, you can do slow. And, and I think now with short short I can do both. That sometimes I can play a little bit uh, not so fast and sometimes very fast depending on the opponent and what he wants after. Uh, so I, I think I learned both. The return with backspin is not a dynamic way to return service. But the skill is essential, and it is an important part of Maze's armory.
Mays was seven years old when he was introduced to table tennis. I started table tennis when I was seven years old and I started to play a little bit home and then then I played with some friends and then yeah I thought it was a very nice game and then then I was a member of a club, small club and there I started. Mm. Was at the beginning I only played for fun and I had not in mind to be a professional but I think around maybe eight, nine, my dream was to be professional in some kind of sport. I, I mean, I love football, I love tennis, I love table tennis, and, and to be professional one day in one sport was my biggest dream. But I think when I, when I first got the feeling that maybe it's possible to be professional in table tennis was when I was like 11, 12, they selected me for European Championships youth, and, and, and there you start to get the impression how is it, and and like this, but it was maybe a couple of years later um, when Dusslov, uh, Borussia Dusslov, they asked me um, to come there for practice and they want to sign me up for a contract to be like number five and to learn. And, and this was a very important decision I made. Uh, and, and there I decided, okay, I want to try. Mario Amazic looks back at his first memories of Michael Mays when Mays joined Borussia Dusseldorf. Tun habe, habe ich irgendwo von ihm genau von wem weiß ich nicht gehört. Es gibt einen Junge in Dänemark. Da muss ich sagen, äh, weil ich habe mit vielen Spielern äh, mein ganzes Leben gearbeitet. Also erster Eindruck war schon, äh, dass er mh, aus dem Rahmen springt. Äh, nicht nur äh, sein Auftritt und seine mh, Körpersprache und äh, wie, 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 wie hat er gespielt, All, war nichts unter Kontrolle. Also Tischtennis war wild, äh, ohne Kopf und, und Schwanz, äh, war total relax. Kann sein, drinnen war er ein bisschen unruhig, weil damals waren in auf äh, viele große Spieler, Samsonov, Matsushita, Roskow, wie auch immer. Aber er hat sowas nie irgendwo nach außen gezeigt. Und habe ich schon damals, vielleicht nach zwei Tagen, mit damaligen Manager in Borussia Dieser gesagt, äh, der Junge ist wert und äh, soll bei uns bleiben. Und aus Grund, dass ich habe, äh, äh, ich will nicht sagen Kredit, aber schon äh, äh, große Vertrauen gehabt im Verein, das war keine Frage. Da wir haben mit Michael viel, nach zwei, drei Tagen, vier Tagen Training schon äh, kleine Gespräche geführt will da Interesse überhaupt haben und sofort hat er gesagt, ja. Und ich habe damals... Äh, Now, Peter Sartz tells more about Michael Mays. Michael, Michael yeah. as a friend. I think he... First... Uh, when you see him, you have... Uh, my first feeling was he... Not so big heart, but he was more... Cold, um, but when you when when you are near him, he have uh, he like his friends very much. It's it's important for him. He's he's very social. He he want yeah, he want to meet meet friends friends a lot. Maybe maybe he could learn to be a little bit more more alone and only relaxing. But okay, he travel a lot, so he have. Uh, lot of time alone when he is home he want to go out and eat with friends and was together with his family so but he he very social and, and thinking about how the people his friends uh, yeah lifestyle if they have problem or or not so I, we speak a lot we when he maybe we are together between 150 and 200 days every year and uh, and uh, maybe the other 150 days we um, maybe speak in telephone 100 days uh, so so we have a close relationship you were talking about not only table no uh, it was many things many his things. private life with, <laughs> with uh, family and girls and have a hard time when his father die and and uh, Everything, mm -hmm. little bit business and. <laughs>
Finally, we asked Koji Matsushita about his impressions of Mays when a teenager. そこが悪そうなやつっていう。そこが悪そう。はい。あの、いわゆる it is from the comments of these three people that we can appreciate his character. We will show you later how Mays developed his table tennis talents. Now we focus on his movement during a rally. Firstly, let's examine the exercises he does each day. The first is a forehand and backhand exercise called one and one. Yeah, the combination between uh, backhand and forehand is very important in table tennis. Uh, especially, it's a good exercise. This Falkenberg, like I just did, that you have, uh, you can practice your backhand and your forehand at the same time. Uh, and this is very important that you can find a way when to step around and use your forehand and when to use your backhand. This is very important in table tennis and therefore this exercise is very, very good. Next is an exercise for footwork. The exercise is to move from the forehand to the middle and then to the backhand using a forehand topspin all the time. the so-called Falkenberg practice, but also one used extensively by the Chinese. Backhand to backhand, move round the backhand to play a strong forehand across the diagonal, and then play another forehand topspin against a ball that has been returned down the line. He has developed excellent footwork and tremendous balance through performing these exercises every day. You can see his real ability in an actual match. In this rally, he anticipated incorrectly, but thanks to the hours of practice and his splendid footwork, he recovered quickly and was able to play a forehand return. Note the speed of the return and his excellent balance after finishing the stroke. Now, let's look at how he plays the ball when it has been directed into his body. It is difficult to create space to hit the ball when it is directed into the body. Mays makes the space by turning the upper part of the body. displays superb use of the body in this rally. Mays leans to the right with the upper part of his body and makes enough space in order to execute a powerful forehand topspin. Note how he returns to a neutral, well-balanced body position after hitting the ball. Let's now consider the dynamics of his movement. Yeah. 
Sometimes Mays loses balance, but he still manages to return well. This is typical Mays. Yeah, this, I mean, I, I have my own style and uh, sometimes it's not the most correctly technique and, and whatsoever, but, but somehow I learn to, to often to play the ball back no matter, no matter what my position is. And yeah, this is sometimes good, but of, but of course sometimes it's also not good. But yeah, this is my style and this is how I play. Wide and fast footwork, a succession of fast movements. He was born with the skill of good feeling for the ball and superb balance. It is these factors that enable him to be a fantastic player. Now let's consider the top spin techniques of Michael Mays. The ability to spin the ball is absolutely crucial in modern day table tennis. A player must be able to block against the topspin return and topspin against the topspin return. Firstly, a block against topspin. Yeah, I think it's very important that you always have your racket high uh, and you are very relaxed in your body. If you are relaxed in your body, you react faster and then you have more more feeling and more control to, to control the speed. And this is very important when you block that you are relaxed so you can control the speed and the spin what is coming from the topspin. Now, topspin against topspin. This is a very difficult. Um, this is a very difficult shot, stroke in in table tennis, uh, especially with backhand. So I mean, it's very risky, and and you only do it if you feel very comf uh, confident, and or if the ball is really short or with not so much uh, speed and spin, then you can do it. But otherwise, it's a very difficult shot, and you have to hit it when it's the ball is on the highest point. So it's many things you have to come together before you can put the ball on the table. In an actual match, Mays is very aggressive when blocking. What is the most effective stroke in each situation? Mays has the answer, and it is special. Now, the ability of Mays to lob the ball with topspin. In Shanghai, Mays used a topspin lob to great effect and it helped him gain a medal in the men's singles event. It's always you're behind the table, you have more time to think what to do. Uh, you have to count the, the ball, how much spin he gave you. If you put it high, it can be some win in the hole from the air condition. This you have to count with also somehow. And, and otherwise, it's just to, to focus from behind where is the table and then try to, to play as deep as possible back because then it's more difficult to smash. Uh, so I always think how I can hit the ball deep on the, uh, on the table so it makes it difficult for the opponent to make the point. Let's watch his wonderful ability to lob the ball in an actual match situation. The topspin lob is so deep that the opponent cannot stop the ball. 
Furthermore, Mays seizes the chance to attack. Note the techniques required when playing a topspin lob, but more important are his idea and ability to realize it in a tense situation. It is not realistic to use a topspin lob as a major weapon. It is just one possibility in order to change tactics. Also, consider how Maze plays when the opponent attacks. The topspin lob of Maze is a trademark of his play, but watch how he plays the ball previous to using the topspin lob. Without this technique, he would have no time to retreat to play the topspin lobbed return. The grip used by Mays is quite unique, but the grip and his playing style are connected. Yeah, generally when I play, I, I have the grip like this, with a finger here, like mostly of the players. Uh, but for example, when I play backhand, I can change a little bit to backhand grip. And when I play forehand, you change automatically a little bit to forehand grip. And this is um, to have better feeling when you play forehand and when you play backhand, uh, and especially with service. Yeah, that's true. The grip used by Michael Mays is very relaxed. I think uh, that's from when I was very little, uh, when you start to play table tennis. I mean, I, I have better feeling here than I feel my, my wrist is more free to make, uh, to make different things. If I have the racket like here, I feel my wrist is very locked and, and that's why I, I try to have a little bit more relaxed uh, grip. The nature of the grip helps him make full use of his wrist and enables him to be an all-round player. Now the materials used by Michael Mays. Yeah, of course, I, I mean the grip uh, on my racket is uh, is not special made, but it's a little bit thicker than normal and then because I like, uh, I like it that way and and I'm happy that it's possible to make it a little bit thicker and so my grip, I, I'm very happy about my grip. He uses a Michael Mays blade with a straight handle. This straight handle of the Mays blade is a little wider and thicker than others. The other Mays blade has a flared handle. Popular with players, it fits comfortably in the hand. The combination of the new material, Arillate Carbon, and the soft wood enables a player to attack strongly whilst being able to play with control when the need arises. The maze blade consisting of arillate carbon was designed to suit the Danes all-round style of play. I think for me this is the perfect combination. I have Bryce in my, uh, in my forehand and EL uh, in my backhand. So, uh, I have Bryce at my forehand because it gives me a very good spin. It's a very fast rubber and uh, I like it because I have a hard price. That means I, I can play quite hard. Uh, and the EL I like because it's a little bit softer and it's a little bit thicker. And there, there you have a little bit more control because normally you block with backhand or, or I like when forehand is hard and backhand is a little bit softer. The talent of Mays has been recognized since he was young. That talent blossomed in Shanghai, China in 2005. At the 48th Volkswagen World Championships in Shanghai, Michael Mays beat Hao Shui to clinch a medal. Let's look back at the incredible recovery of Michael Mays in that match.
No, I mean, if I would have lost 4-0 in this match, I I will for sure be very disappointed, but I couldn't say anything against this because he was playing too good. Uh, I was not playing maybe 100%, but he made me bad also. And, uh, and I always continue to uh, say to myself that, okay, it's first time I stand in quarterfinal at the World Championships. Maybe last time, you never know. So you, at least you fight until the very end. Uh, and this was uh, in my mind all the time, that if he has to win, okay, then, then at least you fight to the very end. You stand in quarterfinal of the World Championship, you need to enjoy yourself. This is first time, maybe last time, you never know. Go out, enjoy yourself and fight. I think so, yes. <laughs> No, no comment, no. Uh, what can I say? I was lucky. He was nervous. He played stupid. I, I was playing the ball back on the table. I fall down because it was wet from sweat. And yeah, normally you lose these points, huh? But this match was not normal. And and what can I say? It's yeah. It, I mean. If you win these kind of matches, you have to play good, of course, but you also need luck. And I had a lot of luck in this. I, I had good feeling from behind uh, from the match against Wang Hao. And then I, I was away from table one or two times and I made the point again. Then, of course, you get more confident and he get more and more nervous because he also knew that Wang Hao missed a lot. Then he started to miss. This was all, almost embarrassing for him. Huh? And, and and therefore, I, I just continue. I mean, I don't have to make easy mistakes. If I under pressure, I go back and then, then I try to win the point there. And yeah, it was very effective, but maybe next time it will not happen. You, you never know. Now they practice. <laughs> Ah, good feeling. Still, when I see it now, it's a good feeling. Uh, yeah, it's just... What can I say? It's what you... I mean, I always dream to get medals at big tournaments. Of course, gold will be the, uh, the best, best. But, but just to, to stand there and you know you have a medal and you won this match, you were down. And yeah, I was very proud that I continue fighting. And, and all these kind of feelings came up to me that Suddenly you're standing here and you won actually this match, you, you, you already was out, you had no chance and in the end after half an hour, uh, half an hour later you, <laughs> you have won it, huh? so it was just an amazing feeling. Koji Matsushita analyzes the growth of maize. そうですね。メイスのプレーは、やっぱり、えー、型にはまってないプレーなので、相手によってその自分のプレースタイルを変えていくっていうところが彼の持ち味だと思うんですよね。やはりその、まあ、早くプレーしないと勝てない選手に対しては台に近づいて、やはりミートを多くしたり、早い打球点でその打っていくようなプレースタイルをしますし、やはりその遅い打球点でそのドライブを対応した方がいい選手に対してはやはりそ,のそういった感じでテンポを狂わすようなそういった戦術を使いますしまあ世界選手権とかはその準々決勝でえハオシュワイと対戦した時なんかロビングでやっぱり勝ってますからねそういうふうなやっぱり相手によって戦術を変えれるとかそういったこと,をところをやっぱり研究すしてほしいですね。見てほしいですね。はい。Peter Sartz, who advised Mays at the Volkswagen 48th World Championships in Shanghai, looks back. In the quarterfinal, he played the best table tennis maybe in his life against Feng Shui 4-0 and against Wang Hao 4-0. These, these two games may be the best two games in, in his life. 
Feng Shi and, and, and after again. Special against Wang Hao, but four zero Feng Shi and four zero Wang Hao. These two games he play nearly hundred percent. And uh, when he okay in quarterfinals, maybe a little surprise for him. Him too, he plays so good and uh, against Hao Shuai was very near medal. This this game was a special game and he was out and normally maybe you win one one of these in your career if you play 20 years. Uh, no, he already have win this game but it uh, was an important, important time in, in the career to, to have the luck on your side but he don't he don't give up you could see him. Peter Sartz appeared calm during the match but after the match against Hauschwey his hand was shaking when he took a drink of water Little bit shaky, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Maybe, maybe relaxing. I don't understand he take medal in world champion in this moment or first in seven set. I feeling uh, okay, so close to to medal. So it was a little bit, uh, yeah, relaxing and uh, was a special situation like like when we win bronze medal in Olympics and. Uh, uh, Maze could not control his emotions. Maze has undoubted talent, but his mental approach was often subject to fluctuation. However, in Shanghai, he conquered any mental frailties and showed how he had matured. How did he control himself? Mays himself analyzes. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have a lot of temper, uh, and I think to have temper in sport is good, uh, but you have to show it on the right way. And and I came to one point, uh, especially I was injured with my with my foot. I was out for six months, and there I started to to think, oh, how much I love table tennis. Huh? I was waiting to to my feet to get better, and I I hope every day I wake up in the morning I could practice, but I couldn't because it was too much pain. I didn't know if I could maybe ever play table tennis again. And all these kind of uh, thoughts I had, and then I said, "Okay, if if I if I get if I get back and fit, then I will, that would then I will for sure change something." I knew that I had some something in my head I need to change, but I couldn't change it by myself. So when I got fit again, I start to work with us um, like a psycholo or what do you say psycholo, and then then he gave me some some things to work on and. And then I started to see the results also, and and of course it was a long process, but but it was something I had to do to to really get to really improve my game. I think from the game I was okay, but often when I was down, I get unbelievable pissed off and can throw my racket everywhere. And and this is this is not good if you want to be a top player. You can just watch at the top players. Nobody is like throwing the racket everywhere or they are all quiet and focused uh, of course sometimes everybody is different also i have a high temper so sometimes i think it's okay that you come out with it or but you have to uh, you have to control yourself and and use it on the right way and i think 90 percent of the time now i can use it on the right way what's in yeah it's yeah, it's this was a good example. Of course, maybe two or three years ago, I would lose this match 4-0 and stop fighting. Maybe, uh, but yeah, I also get older and more experience. And and like I said before, I, I said before the match, no matter what happened, you fight to the end and try to enjoy yourself. You are standing here last eight at the World Championships. Should be fun. That's why you go to the practice every day. You can only 
I can only say that of course everybody is different uh, and you have to find the right way to the right person. I mean, I cannot be like maybe Timo Boll, he is on his way, I'm on my way and we are not same, but we go or every, everyone goes his own way. Uh, but, but I can, you have to be honest to yourself. You have to, you have to be totally honest deep inside to yourself. What do you need to get better? Uh, and when you start to understand what you need, then you can also start to do something about it. Uh, many, many, many people before told me, ah, you have to change, you have to, uh, 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 but I was like, no, I don't need, I can, I can manage it anyway. I was not, I was, but deep inside I knew it was wrong, but when people told me I was, I was not listening. But at one point I start to, to admit it to myself and then I could also start to work with it. And, and, and that's, there I think you have a point. If you admit it to yourself, you have a problem or you have something you need to improve, then you can also do it. Before that is difficult. Mays recognized his own weak points after various experiences and showed his mental improvement. Mays had learned how to control his talent. What is his next goal? I think my target since I was professional was to get on the top 10 in the world. Um, I think now I'm close, but but I'm now I'm for a long time between maybe 15 roundabout, and and I hope in the next year, next two years, that I can like be in top 10 and yeah, of, of course more to one than to 10, but but to be somewhere between the first 10 in the world, this is my target. Uh, and then, of course, when the big tournaments come again, it's like to stand, to stand with a medal at maybe Europeans, Worlds or Olympic Games. I mean, this feeling is, is unbelievable and I would like to try it again. And hopefully with, with better color. I hope that, of course, they can learn something from me. But, and, and I hope they can see with their own eyes what they can learn from me, maybe a little bit, what they can earn f learn from others and what they also think about it. So, because another player cannot take everything from me. He can maybe take a piece from me, a piece from another one, a piece from a third one, and then put it together. Um, and then I, then I think that, uh, that if, that, that costs uh, a lot of practice if you want to be good in table tennis. It's a hard sport, and and you have to you have to deal with if you are willing to to give 100%. I think if you are not willing to give 100% in to be a professional, then it's better then it's better not. Uh, but if it's if you are like on hobby, you want only to play for fun, then I think it's it's most important that that you you do. You do what you want. I mean, uh, you you enjoy life. You play when you want and and enjoy it. Huh? And but this is also for professional important that you enjoy playing. Of course, it's your work, but it's also your hobby. I mean, and this is you have to wake up every morning and say, okay, I'm I'm the lucky one to to play table tennis. And and I think this is a good message. I I learned it. for three four years ago. I maybe wake up ah. Now practice again, no fun. And but now, when I wake up, mostly of the time, I think, oh, it's nice. I I do what I want, and this is important. Michael Mays has a natural creative talent and a great feel for the ball. He is blessed with talent, but he has long-term targets. Achieving those goals may not be too far distant. Because of his fantastic all-round play, which does not fall into any predetermined model, 
he has infinite possibilities to succeed. Anyone in love with table tennis? Butterfly.